Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Ryko Filters, Evans Waterless Coolants and Pace Farm. Now this morning I have somebody picking me up uh, for transport for the day. I uh, have got no idea what is in store, but in the meantime, if you missed last week's episode, here's just a piece of the 2017 Mount Isa Swap Meet Show and Shine. Located at Buchanan Park Entertainment Centre in Mount Isa, the venue was second to none. First up was Alan, a teenager stuck in a 55-year-old body. He had a Maloo ute with paint graphics that were gothic and a sound system boasting a sea of speakers loud enough to rattle your belt buckle. Then there was Peter with an amazing 1967 HR Premiere, cooling off the hot ones by throwing a turbo onto a worked 186 painted up to look like a later VK engine. And the interior said, come and sit on me all day long. Next was David in his Kiwani. Yes, the ugly vehicle award went to this guy in his incredible X underground mine truck that resembled a troop carrier on steroids and something off Mad Max and the envy of Mick Taylor from Wolf Creek. Dave's Pocket Rocket 13D Rotary Turbo shoehorned into a 1969 Mazda 1200 was an eye-opener. The smallest car on the day. Dave's incredible Mazda didn't arrive through the door, I think it came under it. Then it was Monaro time and Graham's 1969 HT hit the bullseye. What a stunner. Original car in many respects with a few tweaks up front. These are the cars that enthusiasts hunt. Then Jason was thrown into the mix with his bolder than ever 1974 XB Falcon Coupe. This is a lot of car, a lot of bling and a paint colour with a ton of sting. This was just some of the quality and the amazing people found at the 2017 Mount Isa Swap Meet Show and Shine. So here I am now waiting for my transport and as I alluded to earlier, I have no idea what to expect. Meet Brett Peterson, larger than life, a born and bred local here in Mount Isa with a family history of over 100 years. Brett is owner of Mount Isa Mining Supplies, delivering to New Guinea, New Zealand and the east coast of Australia. And he loves nothing more than to get out into the scrub in his Ford F250 7.3 litre turbo V8 diesel. I've just got one thing to ask you. Yeah, Fletch, what's that? Where the f*** are we? <laughs> well, Fletch, this is one of the most beautiful places in Australia. We're about 50 kilometres north of Mount Isa at the moment. I love being in the scrub. It's a part of living in Mount Isa. But jump in with me now and we'll go and have a look at one of the biggest mining operations in Australia. How amazing is this? You know, you think of classic restos and you think of preserved cars or restored vehicles. But, you know... There's a lot more on the outside of that when it comes to mechanical things, and I guess a mine, there's a lot of mechanical things happening in there, Brett. There is, Fletch. I mean, when you sit there and you think about it, that decline, those blokes are working 1,980 metres below the surface. I mean, we're talking just short of 20, just short of 2 k's. 2 k's deep. 2 k's deep. You're talking 1,700 kilometres of road down there. I mean, you know, you're starting to head, you, you, you could go between Melbourne and Sydney and start to turn around and, and head half the way back and you're still not as far as what these blokes are. 1,700 kilometres of, ro of, K's road, of road down under the ground. Yep. Yeah, no, it's, it is quite an eye-opener when you hear that. Um, and how many levels are we talking, Brett? Oh, they're down to 20, 26D, 27D, I think it is at the moment. So they're heading down there. Um, but, I mean, you've also got to think there's, there's another 1,000 metres of railway line down there as well so I mean that's an awful lot of track that's Brisbane to Sydney sort of 
railway line. Um, well, that's all on it. Thousand, well. thousand k's. Yep, thousand k's of railway. Thousand k's of railway line, and we're talking twenty six and twenty seven levels down. Yep, that's it. My, I mean, it is an awful big place at the end of the day. That's hard to comprehend, isn't it? I mean, I know it is to think what's happening over there behind us and what is down under the ground. Yep. Just incredible stuff. Look, Manus is Manus is a very big, a very big little city. It's one of the largest cities in the world in 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 area wise. Very small in population, but then you add the mining industry to it, and it becomes a massive city at the end of the day. On a world scale, this mine behind us, where does that sit, mate? Look, it'd have to be in in the top ten producers in the world. It really would be. I mean, it's incredible. The we're, we're sitting coming up towards our hundredth anniversary, um, and I mean that was what started Manus in the first place was the mining industry and yeah i mean it's still it's it's still ranked as one of the number one mines in the world in terms of the railway lines down under the ground we're talking uh, diesel locomotives uh, what sort of trains are we looking at there diesel and electric mate but mostly diesel yeah so you know you, you sit there and you think when, when you drive from from brisbane to sydney and that's in a railway lines underground um and as i said 1700 kilometers of road down there as well i mean it just keeps going the extraction systems to get rid of the fumes down there must be amazing as well Look, and you can see it dotted around the town um but the amount of air goes in is the amount of air that's got to come out so in ventilation yeah they've got to keep it cool um and you, you're talking some high temperatures down there but at the end of the day they do a fantastic job of it that section just there walk us through what's that button all right, so you start off with behind us there in the uh, in the red and red and white stack there is where the cop smelter is, and it works its way back over to the uh, to lead uh, the lead smelter, lead concentrator, um, and copper concentrator. So that's basically what you can see on the surface, and then of course we've got all the copper copper and uh, lead all bodies underground. You know, it's the four big minerals here: it's copper, silver, lead, and zinc, and we're some of the biggest producers of it in the world. How many people does it employ? <sighs> Directly or indirect? I mean, this is Manise is here because of that mine. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what company it is. If it's a, if anything from a cafe to a mining supplier, yeah. um, it's still based here because of that mine. Yeah. Um, and look, I love Manise to death, but you know, we're, I think in the mining industry we're only touching the, the surface of it at the moment because there's an awful lot of mines I think still be de- developed around Manise, and that's what we've got to start to think about too is also servicing those areas. <laughs> I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Evans Waterless Engine Coolant. Simple to install and stays good for the life of the engine. Suitable for all engine types, Evans contains no water, eliminating corrosion, vapour pressure and overheating. With a boiling point of 190 degrees Celsius, there's no application or environment too extreme. EvansCoolants.com.au Water for drinking, Evans for cooling. Australia's changed over the last 80 years, and Ryco Filters has changed with it. But one thing stayed the same, Ryco's commitment to develop and test all our filters under Australian conditions. Today, we're proudly celebrating our 80-year commitment to a design philosophy that ensures all oil, air and fuel filters meet or exceed vehicle manufacturer's specifications, delivering genuine quality and performance you can trust. Ryco Filters, the professional's choice. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. And with a range like this, you cannot go wrong. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House and they're also open Saturday mornings. Their range of machine tools are workshop tested. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range.
An integral part of transport in outback Australia are road trains. People depend on them, and Brett wants to find us one. There's a yard up here where there is bound to be some action. Found ourselves a road train, 2014 Kenworth. What a pretty truck. How you doing, Steve? I'm pretty good, thanks, Fletch. Yeah. That's the way, mate. Thanks for uh, pulling over for the chat. Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Mate, yeah. I've seen some. I've seen three three trailers at around 53 metres long. You've got four here. What's your total length here? Yeah, we're still around that, about that 53 here. Yeah. yeah. Um, same number of axles as a normal triple. Yeah. 18 axles all up. Yeah. I've got to take, I've got to take my hats off to you, blokes. I mean, the, the way you, I mean, you drive these things like a boss. Yeah, yeah well, that's true, yeah, but um, no, nah, it's just we've got to share the road, so yeah, we do it safely, and, yeah. yeah, so yeah, it's just a bit of common sense, isn't it? Yeah. How far are you going to today, Steve? Uh, I'll get back just past Julia Creek, so that's that's me logbook run out by then, so yeah. um, then tomorrow I'll get into Townsville, load up again, and come back out. Yeah, yeah. What's the lifestyle like? I've got a house in Townsville, but yeah, I probably only see it about two nights a week, and the rest of the time it's out here. So you got a picture of it in your wallet, do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. mate. This, uh, as I alluded to earlier, this pretty truck, this uh, 2014 Kenworth. What sort of uh, horsepower are we looking at here? Yeah, no, it's a 600 horsepower Cummins. Yeah, um, 18 speed Road Ranger. Yeah, yeah. so uh, all up around, around about 135 tons Jeez. on mass management. So. Yeah. Uh, we sort of taken off. We need every gear in that gearbox there to get yeah. us going. But yeah, but yeah, she um, cruises along all right once you get along the flat there. Yeah. yeah. How many speeds do you have in the gearbox? Uh, 18. Yeah. yeah. 18 yeah. speed. Yeah. Yeah. So you you're taking off in the bottom part of the box every time. Yeah. Uh, when we're empty, we we skip skip a couple. But yeah. Um, we're naturally, when we're fully loaded, yeah, we're yeah, right down the bottom, bottom bottom cogs there. So so the poor girls work pretty hard. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, Especially coming out loaded, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Steve, take uh, in terms of momentum, like to get up to your 100 k's an hour uh, in distance, like just average. How, how much room? How much space are we looking at there? Oh yeah, it's just, you're looking at yeah, a couple of kilometres. Yeah, yeah. We're we're bound to uh, 90 kilometres an hour yeah. road trains here, yeah, so yeah, it takes a while. Naturally, um, we don't like stopping at the bottom of the hills. <laughs> we're, we're rather stop on the top of the hills. <laughs> that was my next question. What's it like to pull up? Um, yeah, no, it's all right pulling up. Yeah, it's just sometimes you get the road crews that pull you up on the bottom of the hills, you know, stop, go yeah. people, and you got to you, mm. you curse a little bit, but it's just their job. So, yeah, it's... Yeah. So what's the go, Steve? Do you, do you try and drive as much as possible through the day, or are you, are you 24-7? Are you driving through the middle of the night as well? Uh, it's sort of... Yeah, just whatever it suits you. Yeah, um, I prefer early mornings. Um, I, I don't like coming through the hills there late afternoon for the sun in the eyes and a lot of cattle on the road yeah. out between the eyes and the curry. So I like to try and get that that yeah. bit done and in daylight. Um, and the rest of the place, the rest of the roads, pr is pretty quiet, especially this time of year. There's yeah, there's only trucks on the road at night time. There's the caravans are. Yeah. are yeah, parked up and sleeping. So, yeah. yeah. How many years have you been driving the big stuff? Oh, far too many. Yeah, it's probably about thirty odd. Yeah. Have you really? Yeah. 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 Uh, did a fair bit of time up in the territory there. Yeah. Running down from Darwin down to Ellis and that, and yeah. over in the Kimberleys and that there too. So. Where, where are you actually based, Steve? Like, are you based in Mount Isa and you head out from here, or you're Brisbane, or where, where do you actually uh, where are you, where do you yeah. come from? No, our base is Townsville. Yeah. Townsville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We load out at um, out of the terminal there at T and down by the port in Townsville there yeah. and slip out here yeah. yeah yeah mate pulling four though uh does it get much longer than that uh not on the highways here yeah. on the private mine sites there there's there's uh especially in the territory I think in some of the there's body in six or something like that yeah up yeah. in the granite gold mine there but yeah, yeah. but yeah four is about the maximum yeah it's it's long enough yeah 53 meters long enough on yeah. the highway yeah mate I haven't done the count how many tires have you got uh 70 <laughs> That must be, must be a bitch when you get a flat. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've <laughs> got to sort out which one. Yeah, we're, no, we've got a full-time tire fitter at back, back at the yard there, so he's he's really good, uh, Splinter. Yeah, yeah no, he, he looks, does a pretty good job in our tyres there. Good on you, Steve. Look, thanks for the chat, man. I know you're busting to, uh, well, you know, get to where you're going. I, I really appreciate the time, mate. No worries, Fletch. All right. Good to see you. Yeah, no worries, mate. You take care of yourself, you eh? Too. All right. And, uh, when you can, try and see if you can find that house that you've got. Yeah, will do. Right. <laughs> Rightio. Thanks, okay, Fletch. mate. No worries. See ya. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people. 
all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Australia's changed over the last 80 years and RICO Filters has changed with it. But one thing stayed the same. RICO's commitment to develop and test all our filters under Australian conditions. Today, we're proudly celebrating our 80-year commitment to a design philosophy that ensures all oil, air and fuel filters meet or exceed vehicle manufacturer's specifications, delivering genuine quality and performance you can trust. RICO Filters, the professional's choice. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Look at these restoration products. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Evans Waterless Engine Coolant. Simple to install and stays good for the life of the engine. Suitable for all engine types, Evans contains no water, eliminating corrosion, vapour pressure and overheating. With a boiling point of 190 degrees Celsius, there's no application or environment too extreme. EvansCoolants.com.au Water for drinking, Evans for cooling. From a road train, on to Ricky. How are you, buddy? Good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Thanks for inviting us round to your place here. No worries. Yeah, my pleasure. Mate, it's very unassuming from the street. We walk down the back here and uh, you've got a couple of rat rods here. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the first one. Now, you've got two projects here in progress, right? So what's the deal with the first one? Correct. Um, the first one, the the coupe, I guess, I, uh, I uh, inherited that one. Well, I didn't inherit. I came home and had a few to drink on a Thursday night and uh, got on the old eBay and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I ended up winning that one on the Sunday. I didn't realise that I'd bid it on it, so... Um, <laughs> that's we, that's got, funny That's funny already, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I got, the, uh, I got the notification on the Sunday. I was out here tinkering, tinkering away in the shed, and, uh, yeah, it said I had to pay, pay for this item that I'd won, so... Yeah. I was a bit yeah, my shocked. word, you have to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah so. Like you've bought my car, buddy. You know, I want to be paid. Yeah, that's right. And I had a look and it was, a um, yeah, from the US. So uh, it was, yeah, located located over in um, California and LA there. And the guy had bought it was an Aussie. So it worked out well in the end. And um, well, Did you think you were on the Australian eBay? Yeah, I was, all, I was yeah, confused. I always go tinkering <laughs> over there. There's more, there's more of these over <laughs> in the States than there is an Aussie. So... We um, right it's on. always a it's always a car man's dream to sort of look right. at those ones. So it was an accidental spend, and you're on the American eBay, and you thought you're on the Australian eBay. That Ricky, that so far that's hilarious, mate. Yeah, yeah that is. Yeah, yeah. it's lucky I don't have the wife there. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Actually, maybe if she was there, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> but now, tell us about it. Now, what are you going to do with it? Um, look, this one here, I, um, I actually currently did have it listed for sale. I was sort of thinking I was tied up with this one and I've had some um, motorbike commitments this year. So, But um, I'm just going to yeah, keep this one for the meantime and um, we fired up that little, uh, yeah, the little Mercury in there. And yep. That seemed to be the trend, wasn't it? I mean, they, uh, the iconic side valve Ford V8, if you turfed it, and put the mercury side valve in that was always that was kind of like the duck's guts wasn't it? that was the next step step above for the performance side yeah absolutely that was the thing to do back then and um yeah i guess the the four inch stroke mercury was the um the duck's nuts then too and to get your hands on one of those you're a pretty cool chap so ricky what year model is the car uh 1930 model a coupe wow yeah wow. and you like you you like chop on the roof sections out don't you yeah well i um yeah i do and it's a pretty cool look i don't mind doing that and um yeah you do all your your own fabrication work, obviously. Yeah, I did. Um, I did the uh, yeah the fabrication work on that one. Not so much the one behind me, obviously. I bought yep. that one as a roller, so yep. um, just yeah, dummied up that flathead in there. And mate, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, th there's no end to your imagination here. I mean, you, you can just keep on going with a project like this. Just back to the engine for a sec. I think it's pretty cool to see Los Angeles, California, um, there on the exhaust manifold. I think that's pretty neat. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty neat to have that on the side there on the old cast manifolds. They took some pride in what they were making, didn't they, back then? Yeah, absolutely. So, Ricky, the intended plan for this one behind us, how's it going to look when it's done? 
Look, it probably won't change a lot. I just want to up, you know, uh, I guess, upgrade some of the engineering and the chassis, um, chassis assembly on the one behind me. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll just sort of remain the same. It sort of came that way, and I think it's pretty cool that, it, yeah, it sort of stays that way. It did have a three uh, little red ram Dodge Hemi in it um, previously, but oh, wow. yeah, so that's what it did have running yeah. it with a yeah. turbo 400 behind it. But too bad you still don't have that. Yeah, absolutely. They're a little bit of a dream. The old 392, the 392s, obviously the. The duck's nuts there, but... Yeah. Okay, Ricky, well, let's uh, walk a few feet that way and show us the second project. All righty, Fletch. Righty oh, Ricky, we've just moved a few feet over here to the right. Again, we have another chop top, mate. Same car, is it? Yeah, mate, yeah, hmm. same car, Fletch, um, 1930. Although this one's the, the Tudor and not the Coupe, so a yeah. little bit different there and got the flat back back on it and longer roof, so... Yeah. Mate, I like the uh, the engine department here. I mean, the, the carby setup. How sensational is that? That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's um, yeah, it's a pretty cool setup. I always thought they looked good with the old six uh, six hollies on them, all the six drummies. So um, that was sort of the look I was going for when I was building this one. Okay, so tell us about this particular engine, what it is, size, all that type of thing. Fletch, it's a um, 283 Chev, um, second to the little Chev V8s that they built. So yeah, it's a good little motor, and it's um, running the little power pack heads with the yeah, cast alley Corvette rocker covers on it. Early ones, mate. The the old Tudor would scoot along with this up front. I mean, you know you put the boot in it it'd want to go wouldn't it yeah she goes pretty well we've um yeah we've had her out and uh cruise around on the open highway and that a few times so yeah, yeah it's good it'd be an uncomfortable bloody thing wouldn't it oh look surprisingly mate those seats are comfier than they look eh? <laughs> they'd want to be are you going to give it a set of door trims on the inside i mean are you going to give yourself any luxury at all ricky yeah absolutely fletch i will yeah. i'll yeah. um yeah once i get around to it i'll put something simple in there yeah, yeah not quite sure what yet but I we'll mean, driving around the mount isa roads i mean you're gonna you're gonna get a sore butt pretty quick i reckon oh yeah it's not too bad i've got those pillows in there but yeah she's pretty rough in there <laughs> got a few pillows in there to, to soften it up and um yeah mate and forget air conditioning in the summertime you don't need that if the windows do go down which it looks like they do uh well that'll have to suffice absolutely there's nothing wrong with that front one it opens right up and we got that good airflow through there so I like your creative streak. I like how you've, you you get these old 30s cars and, uh, well, you know, you have a go. I mean, you know, you've uh, what you've done here, it's quite clever. And keeping in mind as well, I also admire the fact that you're doing it here in your backyard. Yeah, so the one behind me, I guess the Tudor was built right here where we stand. Um, hmm. A few countless nights and, uh, yeah, with, with some friends and we've all had a bit of an opinion on the car, so it's quite, quite, a, quite a cool thing to build. Yeah, I mean, look, you're here, you've got the washing over there on the left. I mean, you... <laughs> You got an open carport. You got a dartboard over there. I mean, Ricky, you've you've got it all going on here in the eyes, don't you? Absolutely, it's a it's a pretty good place to be. We're very lucky to be out here, and it's a um yeah, I enjoy living out here. It's great. Actually, on a serious note, you are. It's like your own uh, little hidden oasis out here. It's uh, what an incredible town Mount Isa is. Yeah, absolutely, and the events that we're lucky enough to have come out here, and um yeah, and the things that we get to see, and yeah. the beautiful countryside we have. Where did classic cars start with me? Well, Fletch, that's a Fairly, I guess, my whole lifetime I've spent um, around classic cars with my grandparents, um, having a um, 64 convertible that I used to chop round in as a little kid, um, a Chevy Impala. Um, and yeah, my, my, my real father, he uh, had a 60 Impala that he was um, building when I was a young fella, and um, I was lucky enough to have uh, a stepfather at the same time. So he was um, heavily into building race engines and still is back home. Yeah, love working in the shed out the back there, Fletch. Uh, I guess for me, it's kind of... Um, yeah, putting your mind to mind to work, and it's artwork really in, in the big scheme of things. I find it, and um, yeah, creating something that the image that you had in your head, um, and then yeah, I guess when it all maps out and, and you look at it, uh, hours of dummying things up and and, and making templates. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love working out there, and and the more time I spend out there, the more creative you get, and yeah, it's great. Might I say, Ricky, the hospitality here and the time I've been here has been overwhelming, and it just makes you want to return. Yeah, absolutely. It's cool here. Um, the guys around us, and um, we're very lucky to have the, the, the events that we have here. And um, yeah, the people around, everyone's very humble and very, very um, passionate about the things that they do out here. So, yep. Yep. Okay, Ricky, thanks again, mate. Thanks very much, Fletch. You're welcome, mate. And uh, for showing us your two coupes. And one day, hopefully, they'll be painted and finished. And uh, well, they just might look a bit different to how they do now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, hopefully this one here we may paint up in the future. Yep.
Well, I hope you've really enjoyed the second episode of Classic Restos filmed here in the amazing Mount Isa in far northwest Queensland. You know, Mount Isa, there's a stack of stuff to see and do, but Mount Isa is also about the hospitality. Even the people behind me here at the Abacus Motel make you feel welcome as soon as you walk through their door. Why not try and discover Mount Isa as soon as you can? And in the meantime, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Ryko Filters, Evans Waterless Coolants and Pace Farm.